The true story of the true Hebrews has never been told. Bantu, Negroes and Nilotics True Hebrews Tracing Southern African Tribes By Rev. Morgan Shazemba Sichelu Key Verses Deuteronomy 28, 15-68 and Leviticus 26, 14-39 Disobedience Slash Consequences we begin by saying that the Hebrews disobeyed God to just cut the whole story short, because we have so many things to talk about. When you read the scriptures, it will show you what God said was going to happen to the Hebrews as the consequences of their disobedience to the instructions of God. The word of God was fulfilled against them. By 722 BC, the northern kingdom of Israel was conquered by Assyrian and all the ten tribes of Israel were taken to captivity, but others escaped and most of them came to Africa. 2 Kings 17 Only Judah and Benjamin in the southern kingdom remained. Judah also sent and was captured together with Benjamin by Babylon in 580 BC 2 King 24 and 25. During this capture, Verse 26 of chapter 25 shows us that a great number of Jews came to Africa. We should not forget the ten tribes who ran away years back and have already settled and moving to new places in Africa. The notable ones among the ten tribes are Dan, Gad and Asher. Judah was in captivity for 70 years according to Jeremiah 25, 11-13 then came back to bring forth the Messiah Jesus Christ. BC 3 AD 33 Again in AD 70, Judah was conquered by the Romans and the temple burned down Matthew 24, 1-2. But before the destruction of the temple and scattering of Judah again, the Romans and the descendants of Edom or Esau took over the running of the temple and kingship was given to the Edomites. This is the reason why Herod was not a Jew but a mixture between the Romans and the Edomites. They had intermarriages between them. In short, Herod was a descendant of Edom. We have seen that Judah was dispersed from the Promised Land when the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Also when we reflect back in Babylon, we see other members of the ten tribes who became part of Judah. This happened after Assyria was conquered by Babylon. The scripture shows us that some of them failed to trace their clans and they were considered the lost tribe of Israel Ezra 2-59, 62. Those who managed to trace their family roots can also be seen in the New Testament of the Bible. A good example is Anna who was from the tribe of Asher Luke 2-36. The other example are the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ who came from the ten tribes except Judas Iscariot who was the only one from the tribe of Judah. This picture we are seeing here does not mean that all the clans from the ten tribes of Israel became part of Judah whilst in Babylon, no. Most of them ran away from being captured by Assyria first and then Babylon second. For example, Jeremiah did not go into captivity in Babylon, but went to Egypt and many others Jeremiah 29 to 1, 43, 1-44-12. What we have just stated briefly is the consequences of disobedience according to what God told them in Deuteronomy, Leviticus and what Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24-1. Now that they are scattered in all the four corners of this world, how can we know and identify the true Hebrews Israelites of the Bible? This question will take us back to the Old Testament of the Bible. Elliot Smith Ethnologist states that, the Hamites and the Semitic people were virtually indistinguishable. It is important to look at Hamites and Semitic people because this is where the Bantu, Negroes and Nilotic people came from. 
Ham and Shem were black people and we shall see how the intermarried between them occurred throughout the Bible and not any other races. We shall look at their movements according to the Bible. According to Deuteronomy 28, one of the key signs of knowing the true identity of the real Israelites is slavery. Verse 46 puts it very clear that He shall be upon you for a sign therefore, Africa stands as a better place to trace the true Israelites since slavery was one of the activities which was taking place. Many people were sold as slaves to all corners of this world. This matter should draw the attention of all theologians, historian, anthropologists to research more on African tribes. When you look at the whole passage of Deuteronomy, it will give every reader a picture of Africa where such curses are part of its people. About 80, 000 Africans crossed the sea in chains in the 8th century. Other key facts on the identity of Israel. Rob Simon Altaf states, On fall for the typical argument of a Jewish Cohen blood DNA test. It proves nothing this is only a distraction and smoke screen which does not prove anything. The real Hebrews test is your ancestry where you originated from Africa such as Ghana, Niger, Sudan, Nigeria, Chad, South Africa, Congo and some other countries there which likely prove a true Hebrew. If you were in Iraq, Afghanistan, Parkston, India enslaved in Europe, Caribbean islands, America, Brazil and Portugal then you were likely a true Israelite. We agree with Smith who started that the Hamites and Semitic were same in appearance of color. It was difficult to distinguish between the two. Simon also commented that blood DNA test cannot tell the real black Israelites. In our understanding, it is so, because the two people Hamites Ham and Semitic Shem people had intermarriages between them as earlier stated. No any other race was involved in any marriage arrangements throughout the Bible, except for Ham and Shem descendants. Today, we can rightly say, they are almost one people. The name Ham the youngest son of Noah means burned, hot, black and brown. Shem means who a person is egg, name or fame. Shem in English is the same as name. The Shem of God is Yahweh. A good Shem is better than money. A good name is better than money. The meaning of Japheth the oldest son of Noah is enlargement. May he expand. May he give ample room. When we first look at Judah Yehuda means praise or honorable the fourth son of Jacob, married Canaanite women from Ham. All his descendants followed the same way. Even his mother Leah was a black Canaanite woman. Gen 10 to 6, Gen 38 to 6. Her name means tired cow. Actually, many Bible commentator describes Leah to be very ugly. In this case, all those claiming to be of tribe of Judah Yehuda should or must now acknowledge their Canaanite roots of black people through Ham, or be plainly seen as imposters planted by a certain race to cheat to the rest of the world that they are true identity of a real Hebrew Simon Altaf. The name Judah came after the Canaanite city called Jehud Joshua 19-45. A mixture of Israel and Canaan continues. Judges 3, 5-6 says, that Israel dwelt among the Canaanite. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their might ones. This kind of mixture can make the two become one and since they were all black. Who are the Canaanites? The Canaanite came from the first son of Ham and these are Sidon, Hittite, Jebusi, Amori, Girgash, Havi, Ark, Sin, Arvad, Zaymari, Hamadi. Their location is as follows. 
sighed and helped to build the Temple of Solomon 1 Kings 5-6. Hittite two tribes came out. One in Syria Joshua 1-4. Other in Judah Numbers 13-29. Jebusi found in the mountains of Judah mixed with Benjamin Numbers 13-29, Judges 1-21. Amori Mountain of Judah and Ailes with Abraham Abraham Numbers 13, 29 and Genesis 14 to 13. They became servants of Solomon 1 Kings 9, 20-21. Their sons were fathers of ancient Jerusalem. Girgish close related to Sidonians Phoenicians. Hippie Judges 3 to 3. Ark Joshua 16. 1-3. Sini Northeast Lebanon. Arved. Phoenician island of North Syria coast Ezekiel 27-8. Zaymari Southwest Lebanon. Hamadi This is a Canaanite tribe found in the northern Syria of the city of Hamadi the 11th son of Canaan. They were deported into Samaria by Shalmanazar king of Assyria in the place of the Israelites half-tribe of Manasseh, to repeople the city of Samaria. This was after the northern kingdom of Israel was captured in 722 BC. In our earlier comments, we stated that not all the clans and family of Israel were captured. Many of them decided to escape and the notable one is the tribe of Dan who decided to run away 10 years earlier before the capture of Israel. This tribe did not want to go to Judah for safety, because the northern kingdom Israel was at war with southern kingdom Judah at that time. Shortly after that, other tribes followed namely Gad and Asher 2 Kings 17-24, 17-30. The Arya Canaanite tribe of the ancient land of Canaan were Abraham descended. Hade Ari the Hebrews Genesis 14-13 It was at Mamre which is located in the southern Canaan Judah Genesis 13, 18. This is a place where Yahweh appeared to Abraham Abraham and promised him a son Genesis 18-13. This southern part was taken by Judah and Israelites married women from southern Canaan. Tracing the missing line as we look at Shem. Attention to all theologians and historians about the missing genealogy of Canaan Canaan has finally been corrected from the Septuagint as this piece was omitted by the Musarites which has created a conflict in that the sixth son of Shem was Canaan. These Musarites as part of a scheme acted in unlawful by omitting and changed many things such as the name Yahweh to Adoni and Yahweh will punish in his own way. Arpshad was not the grandfather of Shalak but it's Knan slash Canaan. This genealogy show us very clearly that Abraham was an Nilotic person and a person of a black skin color as that was the skin color of Knan slash Canaan who was the great grandfather of Abraham compared Genesis and Luke 3, 34-36. The twelfth son of Canaan the son of Ham is also missing Beershith or Genesis 10, 15-18. We shall look at this next time. Bantu Migration When Bantus came to Africa, they controlled West, Central, East and Southern Africa. They took all the forest to Pygmies to avoid the spreading of Islam. Those from the West joined Bantu Gala in the forest to shield against Muslims. And they called themselves Barkongolo in DRC. Bantus also called themselves Yehounds. Yehud Aramaic Hebrew meaning Dal which is the same capital of Cameroon today Yehound. Most of the tribes in Zambian and Southern Africa can trace their roots from West and East Africa. Most of the tribes kept the Samba Shabbat which is still being practiced in Brazil and Cuba. Others have kept the circumcision of male among African tribes. Others lost the tradition. Most of them were killed if they keep Shabbat. 
Bantus were also given a title by the Muslims as the Eopal of the book this is because the Arabs stated trading in slaves 1000 years before the European slave trade. Hence, informed the Portuguese about the people of the book, a people cursed by God and predestined as slaves Deuteronomy 28, 15-68. The Muslims also called the Western Sudan Yahud which means, he lost tribes of Israel. These Hebrews were also led captive into many African nations by many indigenous tribes on the west and east coast of Africa. Some were sold on the basis of losing in a war. Tribesmen would sell Hebrews directly to Europeans and Muslims. The word Angolo ancient Angelo was derived from two Hebrew words. In this case, we have unmeaning established and Elo or Olo means exile, today it is called Congo. 95 to 99 of Bayathu or Bantu slaves came from the following places along the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Zanjiland or Zanzibar in Tanzania is one of the first places where slaves came through and more accuracy is needed to determine the percentage. 2. Congo Drive in Angola 39.4% Southeast Africa Mozambique and Madagascar 4.7% Nigeria Delta, Cameroon Equatorial Guyan and Gabon Bantu slaves 14.6% Senegal and Gambia 4.8% Guinea, Guinea-Bissau and Sierra Leone 4.1% Liberia and Ivory Coast 1.8% Gold Coast Ghana and Ivory Coast 10.4% Here is a brief summary of the origin of the Negro Zamorite. Hittite, Moabite, Canaanite, Nilotic Abraham, are also known as Atufian Bantus. This is what Prophet Ezekiel says once more. And he say, it says Master Yahweh to Jerusalem. Your birth and your nativity is of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. Ezekiel 16-2. These two who have been mentioned in this verse are black African races from which Israel descended, who traveled east to settle in Canaan before the place was finally given a name S.R.A.E.L. One of the historian by the name of Elu Hugley, wrote about black biblical Hebrews Israelites. He brought out and summarized very important details of this hidden subject. She said as I quote, any of the Israelites who managed to escape their persecutors during the Roman Jewish War subsequently migrated to West Africa, and 16,000 years later, their descendants were captured and brought to America in chains by cruel slave traders. She was quoting a Jewish historian, Josephus from his book, The Great Roman Jewish War, 66-70. This historian wrote about the Jewish dispersion and captivity. Generally Vespasian and his son Caesar Titus fought against the Jews. Millions of Jews fled into Africa, among other places, fleeing from Romans' persecution and starvation during the siege. Dr. Yosef ben Jokenen writes, There are many Hebrews Jews tribes that were of indigenous African origin. These African Jews were caught in a rebellion in Cyrene during 115 CE. This rebellion also marked the beginning of a mass Jewish migration southward into Sudan of West Africa. He again said that. In North Africa, just before the period of Christianity legal entry into Rome due to Constantine the Great conversion in the 4th century there were many Hebrews Jews ribes that are indigenous African Jews the so-called Egros origin were caught in a rebellion in Cyrene against the Roman imperialism and colonialism now the question which we should ask is that if the original Jews were black where did the white Jews come from this is more proof that many Hebrews are in Africa and some crossed the Atlantic and Indian Oceans as slaves. 
For this reason every African America has some Israelite ancestry in their family tree whether he or she knows it or not. Few years ago, some black Americans were trying to do some DNA tests to help them trace their roots in Africa. It was discovered to be true, because some were being linked to West Africa, Congo, South Africa and Southern Zambia in a place called Gambia lead a Tonga word meaning sleeping COW this shows that Gambia lead was also used for slave trade, for both Atlantic and Indian Oceans way. And according to latest discovery at the site July, 2016, the National Heritage Conservation Commission excavated a skeleton believed to have existed between 700 AD and 1100 AD. Here is a statement of facts on Hebrews. There are two main families in Africa, Ham and Shem. Shem and Ham are both Africans by land mass. Shem and Ham are both black, brown, light dark brown skinned. Not all blacks are Hebrews, but Bantu and Nilotics are, which means Bantu and Nilotic people are Negroes. The race of Africans corresponds to Hamitic tribes who covered an exclusive plot of land mass given to them by their ancestors. However, since both Sham and Ham have shared this common Africa land mass since the flood, and since Noah, Enoch, and fathering patriarchs have walked and lived on Africa before the flood, before there was an African Ham and Shem, then it is correct to call them Africans in the sense of land mass and not race. To identify people you have to be able to understand the migrations and regions these people came from. What family do the Negroes belong to? Answer is Bantu and Nilotic people. The Nilotic Negroes people are the progenitor of the Bantu Negroes. The Bantu is an admixture of Asiatic fraction. The Bantu and Nilotic people suffered slavery and the word Bantu is derived from Hebrew word Bethuela. Therefore, Israelites are a Negro people and not any other race which is not connected to Abraham. The original Arabs were mostly black races and Jokhan is the real progenitor of Arabs. They are dark skinned whom rarely show on TV today. The original Arabs were both a Negro Hebrew and African Ethiopians. This means that the descendants of the pharaohs of Egypt are in Africa among different tribes. This means Edom or Esa is a Negro and Ishmael is also a Negro. The sons of Abraham by Keturah whom he sent to the country far east, away from Isaac are also Negroes. Converts to Judaism May we further explain that the Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe are converts to Judaism. This was during the invasion of the Greeks and the Romans in Israel. A known percentage of Ashkenazi Jews have been mixing with Edom bloodlines. Therefore, it is correct to say that the Ashkenazim Jews are both Gentiles and Edomites. They are both Negroes from mixing with Edom and Gentiles from their original antiquity and homeland of Ashkenaz the first son of Gomer who was the son of Japheth. On the other hand it is again not correct to call all the Ashkenazim Negro Hebrews of Edom stock. The Sephardim Jews were also converts that mixed with Negroes from the genealogy of Edom and a very small percentage are true Israelites. Europeans and Negroes had a mixture to create the kinkly hair illusion. Many Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews are Gentile converts in our modern days. The origin of the Ashkenazi is Khazarian near the Caspian Sea and the Sephardi came from Yemen. In Yemen the whole kingdom was converted to Judaism in the ancient times. When Edomites slash Si were converted to Judaism, they took key places and then killed many Hebrews and overtook the temple rule. The book of Psalms 83. 4-8 can give a picture of what was their motive for taking such an action. 
they had mixed marriage with the Romans and started to rule over the Hebrews instead. This came as a future prophecy fulfilled in the Second Temple during Herod's time. Herod was an Edomite hybrid. Esai had also a mixture with Ishmael through through Magala the daughter of Ishmael Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth, to be his wife in addition to the Canaanite wives he had. The Arabs and Egyptian became mixed and are to this day. Remember that polygamy wasn't as part of real Hebrew culture which we can even see among African tribes today. The Caucasian Jews do not practice polygamy because they are not true Israelites but Gentile converts from Khazari in Russia. The lifestyle of Hebrews is patriarchal marriage and monogamy was considered of Satan.